Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. We magnify you this morning. We glorify you this morning. We thank you this morning. Thank you, Father, for your mercy, your grace this morning. Thank you for waking us up in our right mind. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. I thank you this morning. Thank you for your grace, your mercy. Hallelujah, Jesus. I thank you, Father. I thank you for the power of the Lord that sits upon our lives. Thank you for your anointing this morning. Father, I thank you, Father God, for your love this morning. I thank you for what you're doing and what you're going to do this morning. Father, I just thank you right now, God. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you, Pastor Cynthia. God bless you. I'm uh, Crystal. I'm sorry, Pastor Crystal. Hallelujah, God. We just thank you this morning. Hallelujah. We thank you this morning, God. We thank you this morning. We magnify you this morning. No weapon that is formed against us this morning shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against us in judgment shall be condemned. We curse the very root of every negative word that's been spoken against us, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, open up our eyes that we may see, Father God, what the enemy is doing, Father God. I pray that we don't miss one thing. We don't miss one thing, Father God, and I don't care what it is. Don't let us miss nothing. Don't let us miss nothing that the enemy is doing. Everything that he's doing, expose him, God, in the mighty name of Jesus this morning. Father God, we thank you. We magnify you. We bless you, Jesus. Oh, glory be to your name this morning, oh God. Father, you are a great and mighty God. Father God, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you for all that you're doing and all that you're going to do this morning for your people, oh God. Father God, we thank you for Lawrence good it up about the truth. Breastplate of righteousness. Be shot with the preparation of peace. Shield of faith. Helmet of salvation. Sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. We put on the whole armor of God, Father God, that we be able to withstand against the wiles of the enemy this morning, Father God. We thank you this morning, God. We shut down every little, uh, uh, voice of the enemy that would try to lie and try to come up against us we come against all wicked demons this morning all witchcraft spirits this morning all uh, sorcery spirits this morning father god that will speak father god in the name of jesus we destroy and we command every demon to be be um bound father god we command and we come against the spirit of Come against the spirit of, of, of lying, Jesus, right now in the name of Jesus. We come against the spirit of Father God, and that's a destiny destroyer. We come against that spirit in the name of Jesus. We pull down, down every tongue that's speaking up against your people this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, Father. We come against all familiar spirits this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, all spirits of familiarity, we cast it down. All spirits of divination. In the name of Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus against it this morning. God bless you, um, Prophet Sandra. We come against it this morning. We destroy the works of the devil this morning that comes to destroy, that comes to steal, Father, from us. In the name of Jesus, we ask you, Father, that none of these spirits, Father God, are able, Father God, to use us this morning, Father God, or to use our platform, Father God, in any way or shape or form, Father. We thank you this morning, hallelujah, for your mercy, your grace, hallelujah, your love, oh God. We thank you for those that are coming in, Father God. We thank you for those, Father God, that are going to come in today and to learn, Father God, about these witches in the pews, Father God, this witchcraft that's being worked in the pews, Father God, and we know that it's being done. It's not a lie. It's not a game and it's not a trick. We know that they're doing this. We know that they're using the platform, Father God, to speak demonic stuff. We know that they're using the platform, Father God, to destroy uh, the lives of people. We know that these things are existing and we know there exists every day, Father God, in the name of Jesus, but give us the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that we may know what we're dealing with, Father God. Open up our eyes, Lord Jesus, that we can see, Father God, through the eyes of your son, Jesus Christ, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father, we thank you. We come to tell you thank you. We come to let you know that we love you. We magnify you this morning. We magnify you this morning. We give you all the praise and the glory this morning. Father, there's no weapon that is formed against us that's ever going to prosper. God bless you, Pastor Michael. No weapon that is formed against us is going to prosper this morning, God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh, Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you this morning. We thank you. We give you all the honor and we give you all the glory. We thank you for we know who we are. We thank you for giving us our own identity in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for those, Lord, that are out there still uh, out in the streets, Father God, those that know you. God bless you, Brittany. Those that know you and they're still out there, Father God. Uh, uh, 
in the middle, not hot and not cold, but lukewarm. I pray that you bring them in this morning. Bring them in this morning, Father. God, pull them back into the house of God of safety in the name of Jesus. Let them know that they're in danger. Oh, God, let them know that they're in danger out there, Father God. Walking around with not without you, God, in the name of Jesus. It's dangerous to be walking around out here without you in this time this last and evil days that we're dealing with, Father God. Oh God, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you. We resist advancement to destroy our lives, influences in our ministry, our businesses, and our pro our prosperity. Father God, our relationships and opportunity, we break our satanic, satanic bondages and resist bewitchment. Father, severe, eagle, illegal. We thank you, Father, for severe, illegal, spiritual attachments, covenants, contracts, <clears throat> excuse me, Obligation vows in the name of Jesus. We reverse the ten contaminations. We cause the blood of Jesus to purify. Father God, our document documented our souls. Anything that Father God is trying to contaminate our souls, Father God, we ask you, Father God, that you release us from it today. Oh God, we thank you, Father God, for your name. We break free from every evil thought, psychic power, projection, suggestions, and noodles, and that have been designed to discourage discourage, mislead, or confuse us. We destroy every evil suggestions, spiritual transfers, transferences in the name of Jesus. We cancel illegal soul ties, eagle entanglements, un, unravel and severe eagle, Father God, entanglement, entangle, God, release us from every entanglement this morning in the name of Jesus Christ and Nathan. Father, we ask you that you help us to operate Father God, in your power, Father God, in your power, Father God, demonstration and manifestation, demonstration and manifestation, Father God, in the name of Jesus and on this platform, manifestation, manifestation and there, uh, demonstration, Father, in the name of Jesus. We pray for the blood. We pray for the blood. We pray for the fire of God that will be in this room today. We thank you for your power, God. We thank you for the power, Father. Like you said in Acts, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, like Paul, Father God. He did signs, wonders, and miracles, Father God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh, Father God, give us the same power, Lord God. Help us to know who we are so we be able to use that power because we already have that power in the name of Jesus, oh God. Free us from any satanic emotional uh, entanglement, Father God. God. Wash us, Father God, and we shall be clean. Free us from any satanic emotion manipulations. We notify the spirit of sabotage, seduction, and deception. We shall not be undermined, underestimated, or unvalued in the name of Jesus. We notify the defamation of character through slander in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Oh God, we reverse bad reputation and stigmatization by association in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare that our contaminations are Father God, are real related it by the blood of Jesus. They're gone, notified in the name of Jesus. We declare our name is associated with honesty, integrity, righteousness, holiness, uprightness, and purity. Frustrate, frustrate and bring to nothing the evil procrastinators in the name of Jesus. Father, reverse every evil decree. Disappoint those opening in the spirit of Haman. God, in the name of Jesus, as you overrule and veto diabolic ordination, the legislation, policies, Father God, and regulations in the mighty name of Jesus. We expose and disgrace the enemies in all their shim, strategy, tactic, plots, plans, and device ways. We put, we, I'm sorry, I put up, we put up in resistance. We resist you in the name of Jesus. Let the fire of God destroy the activities of the enemy this morning. In the name of Jesus, those that have constructed satanic snares, demonic traps, let their plans be voided and assignments frustrated. Unveil and expose evil collaborators and collaborations against your people this morning. In the name of Jesus and those who have gathered, be scattered never to up regroup again in the name of Jesus. Let their eyes be darkened that they see not their ears be blocked that they hear not in the name of Jesus. Let them seek their uh, uh, substances out of desolate places. Stretch forth your hand against them and cover them with reproach, dishonor and shame. Persecute them with the tempers of judgment and a storm of displeasure. Make them afraid of the arrows by day and the terror by night. Arise, O God, and let your enemies be scattered this morning. In the name of Jesus, close every door to the gate of Satan. Prohibit him to access to our properties, our family, our children. Father God, in the name of Jesus, be our fire by night and smoke by day. Let the enemy track of trace us as we had advanced in the kingdom of God, let him not track or trace us as we advance in your kingdom assignment to fulfill your purpose in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we thank you this morning. God, we thank you this morning. 
We thank you, Jesus. Father, I pray for Mary, Mary, God, in the name of Jesus, as she go to this funeral today, that you will encamp in your angels about her, that you will put a hedge around her in the name of Jesus, like you did Job. I pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you comfort her heart. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you notice today, Satan, in the name of Jesus. We come against our spirit of depression, our spirit of frustration, anxiety, grieved in the name of Jesus right now, Father. I pray that your peace will fall upon her, that she will have peace as she goes, Father God, and as she comes back, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for your mercy, your grace, your love, and your compassion towards your people today, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Huh? Help us to know who we are, God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh God, help us to operate in your power, manifestation, and demonstration. Father, we're blessed going in and we're blessed going out. We're the head and not the tail, and we're above and not beneath. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're the lenders and not the borrowers in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God. Oh God, creating us a clean heart this morning, creating us a clean heart this morning in the name of Jesus. Bless every family, Father God, that's associated, Father God, in this platform today. God bless them today, Father God. Move by your Holy Ghost today in their lives, oh God. Move by your spirit like never before, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, we we, we, we thank you for the spirit of the destroyer that we Destroy everything that's not like you in the name of Jesus. Huh? Help us to walk up, walk in your power this morning in the name of Jesus. Help us to walk in your power in the name of Jesus daily in the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh, Father God, thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing, God. Thank you for touching those that are in the courthouses today, those that are in jail today, those that are in prisons, those that are going, going to, to the hospitals today, God. In the name of Jesus, touch those that are in juvenile hall today. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we thank you for the convalescent homes, Father God, in the name of Jesus, the ones that are in foster cares, God, in the name of Jesus, God, I pray for the law enforcement. God, I pray that you will move in the law enforcement today, oh God, that they, they do the right thing, oh God. Expose those, Father God, that are not doing right in the, in the police force, God. Expose those DAs that are not doing right, God, in the name of Jesus. Remove them and replace them in the name of Jesus, oh God, with your righteousness and your integrity and your honesty in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Oh, Father God, we thank you for every pastor, every leader, God, in the name of Jesus that stands in your by your name, oh God. Every bishop, every evangelist, every minister, Father God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Every upcoming minister, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And Father God, I ask you, Lord, that you would move on every missionary in the name of Jesus, every prophet. Every apostle in the name of Jesus, every teacher going to the school systems, God, in the name of Jesus. Walk up and down the school systems today in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Oh God, we reverse every curse. We thank you for touching everyone in this virtual room, their family members. Oh God, we thank you this morning. We thank you this morning as we go into this teaching, witchcraft in the pews, that you will protect us, that you will cover us in the name of Jesus. There will be no retaliation in the name of Jesus against us, Father. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, Father God. In the name of Jesus this morning, we thank you for your fire, God. Your consuming fire this morning. Your consuming fire this morning. Oh, God, we thank you for your consuming fire this morning. Consume everything that's not like you this morning. In the name of Jesus, give us and renew our mind daily, God. Give us a new mind, Father God. The mind of Christ in in Christ, the mind of Christ Jesus, Lord. Give us your mind, God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh God, we thank you this morning. We magnify you this morning. We give you all the honor and the glory this morning. Hallelujah, God. Oh God, we're just so grateful and we're thankful. We're so thankful for what you're doing. We're so thankful for what you've already done. We're so thankful, Father God, for how you're moving by your spirit even now, God. We are thankful and we love you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. And Cheryl Lacke, Father God, you touched Cheryl Lacke, God, and you blessed her. God bless you, Pastor Carmen. God, you bless her this morning. God bless you, Pastor Ebony. God bless you for all of those, all of you that are on here. God, we thank you this morning. We magnify you. We give you all the honor and the glory this morning. Hallelujah, God. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, for those that don't know you, Father God, help them to know you, God. Give them a better understanding of you. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you this morning. And we magnify you. We give you all the honor and we give you the glory this morning, God. In Jesus' name, Father God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to start this. 
I'm going to start with the introduction of the book. Have you ever intended a church where the pastor was domineering, using fear to manipulate the members, perhaps a fraction in the church seemed exclusively controlling and wanted to influence every decision? Whether these people knew it or not, they may have been practicing witchcraft. You're not supposed to be controlled by anybody. Witchcraft is alive and well, and it is influenced. It is felt throughout America society and many of its institutions, including the church. Don't believe me? Far more than a harmless children's fable. Witchcraft is found in scriptures and used by evil forces to deceive, divert, and discourage believers from seeking God and fulfilling Christ's calling for his bride, the church. Instead of serving and worshiping God, too many Christians have allowed themselves to become vulnerable to spiritual attacks. Instead of ministering to the sick and the needy, the least of these, they have been led astray unto human causes and demonic uh, distraction. In the first part of this book, I will define witchcraft, show its original scriptures, and describe the many forms in which it exists in the world today. God bless you, Tracy. God bless you. In the second part, I will provide uh, actual examples of witchcraft in action today. I will expose such culture phenomena as the secret, the religious right, and the Don Amis controversy, the Gen Jenna Six, and the Million Man March as specific efforts to manipulate the body of Christ for the cause of Satan. Finally, in the third section, I will explain what Christ Christians have to do to protect their homes, their churches, lives from the insidious effects of witchcraft. The Bible says many people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge, Hosea 4 and 6. My prayer is that this book might equip the men and women of God with knowledge that they need to effectively war, wage war, uh, I'm sorry, wage spiritual war against the enemy and drive them out of the pews. Anytime you're being controlled, anytime you feel, you feeling controlled, that's not of God. I know a controlling spirit when I come around it, and I got to I got to excuse myself because uh, and it's easy even as a Christian to fall into that. It's easy to fall into that because a lot of people what they want is the power. Even Christian want power. It ain't just the world that wants power. Christians want power. And when you start seeking power more than you start seeking the Lord, then that's what you're going to get. You're going to get witchcraft. You're going to get control. You're going to get all kinds of demonic spirits that's going to enter in because now you done lost the, 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 the main point that you are not God. You cannot do anything without him. He's the only one that can move and do the things that he does. You are not in control. Then that's another thing. We think we're in control of things. You are not in control. God is in control of everything. He's all powerful, all knowing all knowing and as long as we keep walking in that spirit we need to check ourselves and make sure we're not walking in witchcraft people say i heard people say i was humble i'm humble i'm humble i'm humble but they're not humble because i don't care if you are a pastor an evangelist i don't care who you are you still need someone to be above you to watch out for your soul that's why god put them here to be honest with you, right now, I have three churches covering me. I have three churches covering me right now. So I'm grateful. I'm grateful for that. Because they, don't, they didn't have to, but they all wanted to. And I thank God for that. Amen. I have, I'm very grateful. Because you know what? You need... We need to stop fighting battles and let God fight our battles. Sometimes you just got to be quiet and let people just have, let people have it. I'm learning to let people have it. You can have it. Do your thing. And I'm learning when the enemy comes in, people, you can, I, I, as soon as the enemy comes in, I already know. I can see it. I don't know if that's the, the, the my eyesight that God's given me, but I'm going to go ahead and finish this. Read the book. What is witchcraft? With the ever-increasing fed and um, fascination of myst mystical teachings and beliefs, those who are seeking a deeper understanding of the supernatural often ask, why do Christians refer to witchcraft as sin? Many will suggest that witchcraft is simply the harmless worship of, na natural, of nature. They claim that both Christianity and witchcraft 
serve a higher power and that there is no significant difference between the two. There is. Because when I was in witchcraft, I thought I was serving God, but I wasn't serving God. It was the enemy. It was not God because he also calls himself a God. To do this, we must strongly disagree. As Christians, we must be very clear concerning the source of the power we are serving. Like I said, there are Christians that want power. And some of them are not even ready for the power. They just want power. And their spirit is stinky, stinky, stinky. And it stinks in the nostril of God. We got people running around here with the spirit of Jezebel. And we got people running around here with manipulation and control. And they already done tapped into the power of the devil, not the power of God. Because God doesn't control and God doesn't do, bring division in the body. That ain't God. But we have to recognize these spirits. To this, I must strongly disagree. As Christians, we must be very clear concerning the source of the power we are serving. But who are we to believe? How are we to discern between harmless fun and actual evil spiritual realities? Just as those who follow the principles and teachings of other beliefs have their manuals to lead and guide them to gain knowledge and deeper understanding. Christians too employ a guide whereby we are led according to our beliefs, the Bible. Biblical teachings are not meant to invoke argumentative debates, but to serve as direction for those who believe and for those who are seeking a deeper revelationary experience with God. Many people may not be aware that witchcraft is mentioned several times in the Bible. In the Old Testament book, 1 Samuel, Saul is rejected as the king for his rebellion against God. Rebellion is witchcraft. For rebellion is as sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he also has rejected you from being king. 1 Samuel 15, 23. Why are, why are rebellion and witchcraft compared in this? God bless you, Jessica. Compared in this instance. To rebel against something is to defile its authority. Our authority as believers is Jesus Christ. And in rejecting him, we replace his beloved power with influence sources majesticism and powers that devour from errors other than the father. When you seek in power for anything, anybody or anyone else, but God, you're, you're in witchcraft. When you want to, when you want to make someone do something force someone to do something that they don't want to do, you're in witchcraft. You're manipulating. That's the spirit of manipulation for somebody to call horse you to do something. Someone to try to give you something or, or do something for you special to get you to do what they want you to do. It's witchcraft. It's witchcraft. And I'm going to say this. The saints got that bad. We will manipulate somebody and tell them this, that, and that, and the other to get their trust, to get their comfort, and to get them to do what we want them to do. And I'm going to tell you something. What's the difference between the devil and us is that we do the same thing. We don't start up. We don't snatch them right away. We go little by little by little. We feed a little bit, then we feed a little bit, feed a little bit. And it's like, it's like throwing out a fish, uh, throwing out a, 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 a you know, the, the fish line and then reeling them in. That's what it is. The word witchcraft comes from an old English word, wick, wick, it's, it's called wickercraft. God bless you, God bless you, Althea. Wickercraft. At its most basic, those who practice witchcraft, witches use it to manipulate the will of others. And we got church folks doing that. God bless you, LaDonna, God bless you. We got church people doing that. We do. But if you don't open up your eyes and see you ain't going to catch it because they're going to look just like they're going to look like God. They're going to look like they're doing the will of God. I'm going to say this one more time because I hear the Holy Spirit saying they do the same thing the world do. When the world wants you out there, they take you little by little. Just smoke this cigarette. Take a smoke of the cigarette. Some people are going to keep on smoking. Some people won't. Smoke this weed. You smoke the weed. You like it. Then you're addicted to it. Snort this coat. You snort the coat, then you're addicted to the high that gives you. Okay? So what does the church do? 
the same thing. Come over here. Come over here. I'm going to bless you this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Then they turn around. And what they do is once they get you, it, it, it's like manipulating you in, manipulating you in, manipulating you in, manipulating you in. They offer you things to get you to come. Oh, God. This is what the church does. The church does the same thing. But you have to be the one to know who is God or the devil. Because if you don't pay attention, they both similar to me. They both similar to me. I said, I fell victim before. See, I'm telling you, it's, it's almost the same thing. In practicing witchcraft, human beings are actually attempting to re, uh, replicate the wonderful acts of God. Either with natural product products. See, I didn't even know it was there. Natural products, like I said, or with the aid of the devils. Scripture gives us three words that describe the occult. Divination, which I've been teaching y'all about the spirit of divination. I keep telling y'all to go watch that movie. Divination, sorcery, and witchcraft. Divination is a very powerful demon. Okay? That spirit of divination is a very powerful demon because all it got to do is drop something in your ear or drop something in, in your spirit. And if you're not tuned with God, if you're not fasted up and prayed up, and if you're not really seeking the Lord like you should, that spirit is going to start talking to you and getting you to do what it wants you to do. It'll take the word of God and distort it. Oh, God, I thank you, Jesus. These are the three pillars of demonology. The three pillars is divination, sorcery, and witchcraft. Remember that divination, sorcery, and witchcraft are the three pillars of demonology. Let's look at these three close words closely. Let's talk about divination. What is divination? I've been I, the Holy Ghost been saying this about the spirit for a minute. I mean, you can go to Google and Google and find out more about it because you need to know what you're dealing with. You need to know what you're dealing with. That's why we just join churches and we don't even seek the Lord. We just, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm getting a high and I'm getting all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, serving God is not in a feeling. It's not in a feeling. Divination is a fortune-telling portion of the spirit realm. Okay? We talked about psychic powers. We talked about prophetic powers. Divination is a fortune-telling portion of the spirit realm. Some people have already tapped in to that spirit. And y'all run to every prophecy that they're given. And you don't understand that some of these people are already tapped into the spirit of divination. They're foretelling things because they're in that, that realm. But y'all, everybody thinks it's, it's the word of God. It's the word of God because it, it may be accurate. It may be. But what you need to understand is the devil knows you too. He knows you <laughs> He knows you and the spirit of divination can hear everything and they, they, they hear stuff and then they go back and repeat it. It often works through tarot cards, tea leaves, crystal balls, horoscopes. Some of y'all that still love horoscopes and I know I'm talking right. There's some of you Christians that still going to read them horoscopes. Y'all still on, 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 on Facebook playing those little games that they, they have on there. You're in witchcraft. You're opening yourself up to witchcraft. I'm telling you, palm reading, tune into late night television and you see psychic hotlines flooding through the airwaves where desperate people consult with modern soothsayers who tell people what they think they want to hear as their 900 numbers rack up at uh, uh, 90, 399 a minute. Promoting as an amusement, these tools of Satan not only steal people's money, the callers are actually giving legal ground to the enemy. So anytime you're doing that, you already done open up yourself up. So if you're being attacked and all this stuff is happening to you, it's because you don't open yourself up. I'm going to tell y'all something. It's so important for you to seek the Lord for who's going to cover you, who's going to be your leader. You need to seek God for that. I'm telling you. Because people will tell you what you want to hear, then you get involved, and then next thing you know, all hell is breaking loose. All hell is breaking loose. If you're constantly having problems, if you're in a ministry, I'm going to say it, if you are in the ministry and you're constantly having the battle, 
you better seek God. You better seek the Lord because I was in a ministry like that. I was fighting. I mean, I'm, I, 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 I broke my toe twice. I broke my toe twice. I uh, uh, tore my Achilles. It was just constantly bad things happening to me. Just constantly. I said, hold up. Something's wrong here. I just telling this to someone. The church be acting like psychics. They, that's right. That's what they do. They, because they done tapped into a spirit of divination. But because you don't know. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Me, 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 God, me, God, me, God, me, God. And you, you, you all in, they all in devin, the spirit of divination. I'm telling you, you got to be careful. Tune into the late. Okay, look, he said, hot life psych is 99 cents a minute promoting the amusement tools of Satan, not only steal your money. Your callers are actually giving legal ground. You done gave legal ground to the enemy, drawing them even deeper into the influence of the demonic. God bless you, Pastor um, Al Booker. Both of the Old Testaments in the Bible make it very clear that we are to avoid divination of any sort. I'm going to give y'all, I'm going to tell you guys again, any of you that have a Roku and you have that on your phone, on your TV or whatever, go to Tubi, T-U-B-I, and watch the movie Divination. So you can understand, because some people I can tell you, but when you see it for yourself, you understand it better. That spirit is one of the very, very active in the body of Christ. But you don't know it because... That's why we're here to learn, because we don't know what it is. And if you don't know what it is, you're going to fall prey to it. Do not turn to mediums or seek out spirits for you, for you will be defiled by them. Yes, and it's free. Yes, divination is the practice of seeking knowledge of the future or the unknown by supernatural means. Exactly. Exactly. And we got saints doing that. Christians are doing that. They're doing it. I am the Lord, your God. The Lord is saying, do not turn to mediums or seek out spiritualists for you will be defiled by them. I am the Lord, your God, Leviticus 1931. I will set my face against the person who turns to mediums, spiritualists, or to prostitute himself by following them. I didn't say it. God said it. He will turn his face against you to prostitute himself by following them. And I will cut him off from his people. Leviticus 20 and 6. So this ain't my words. This is the word of the Lord. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices his son, daughter, and the fire, who practices divination or sorcery and interprets omens, engages in witchcraft, or casts spells, or who is a medium, or spiritualist, or whom consults the dead. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord. And because of these detestable practices, the Lord your God will drive out those nations before you. Deuteronomy 18, 10 to 12. I bless you, Ricky, then. The central uh, issue in the uh, prohibition of divination in the Old Testament was that it led people away from God and attempted to control future events through spells and evil spirits. Even the result was sep separation from God. The people of God were warned not to get involved in any way with those who did not serve God. They were to tear down and destroy the enemy pagan influences among them. We know from reading the rest of the scriptures that the Israelites did not do so. The nations that God displaced for Israel to enter the promised land served false gods of every sort. And some of those, these occult practices crept unnoticed into the every lives of God's people. Because everybody wants a prophecy. Everybody wants a word. 
Everybody wants to know what's happening. Everybody wants to know where they're going. Well, the, you know, the way you know where you're going is by reading the word of God. His, his word will not return to him void. His word will go out and accomplish that and send it out to do. And his word has power. The reason why we don't, we walking around here um, come claiming that we have power, but we really don't because we're not seeing any signs, wonders, and demonstration. We're not seeing it. And the New Testament, we read a woman who was controlled by the spirit of divination. Once we, it says, once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were, uh, it says, we were met by a, uh, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune, fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the most high God who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so troubled that he turned around and said to the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. So he had power and that's all we're supposed to do is speak to them demons and they leave, but we don't have that power because we're too busy seeking. We, we're seeking prophecies instead of seeking God. We're constantly seeking prophecies and not God. We command you to come out of her. At the moment, the spirit left her. When the owners of the slave girl realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities, Acts 16 through 19. And what does people do? Folks in the house of God, when they get exposed by something, what do they do? They persecute you. They slander your name. They try to bring you down. They try to say bad things about you because now the Holy Spirit has revealed to the people who they are and they're mad. The spirit in them are mad. So now they're going to slander you. They're going to try to do everything to destroy you. But I don't care because I serve God. Me, I don't care. I've been delivered from people and I don't care what they think of think of think of me. Especially when nobody has a hell of heaven to put me in. And some of us need to get to that point where we don't care what people say or do. They don't have a have a heaven a hell of heaven to put you in. So what, do you really care? I don't. What I care is if what the Lord thinks. What's the Lord saying? What he thinks about me. Am I doing his will? Am I telling the truth? Am I speaking truth? Because at the end of the day, I'm going to be accountable. He's going to ask me, did I do what he asked me? Did I do what he told me to do? Because I don't want no uh, nobody's blood on my hands. And each of us going to have, each of us going to be, going to give an account for every word that we speak out of our mouths. We're going to give an account. That means everything that comes out of your mouth, when you get to heaven, if you make it there, you're going to have to give an account for every word. So we got to be careful of the things that we're speaking, negative things, whatever we're speaking, especially when we're talking against our sisters and brothers. We better be very careful because you're going to give an account. Notice that the spirit began, began its harassment as Paul and the others went to prayer. That place of fellowship with God. It says every careless word, every careless word. The others went to prayer that, that um, I'm sorry, that place of fellowship with God. The slave girl followed him proclaiming the truth, but in a mocking manner. Okay. Because the devil will mock you when you live in holy and doing what God tells you to do. He'll mock you. And some people will fall for it. Oh, they talk. Keep on talking. Cause God has opened up so many doors for me. You guys. Oh my God. You just. I'm telling you, the Lord has opened up doors for me. Okay? And I'm not going to share it until it all comes to fruition and then I'll share it. But there's so many in the name of Jesus. You see how the enemy don't want this word out? God bless you, Pamela. You see how he, he started messing with the internet already, but it's okay. We're going to get this word out. We, this word is going out today, Satan. It's going out today. We need to know your, your tricks and games. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. You can, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Can you guys hear me? Let me see.
Okay. Okay. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So the slave girl followed them, proclaiming the truth, but in a mocking manner. And the, finally, Paul dis, disposed the de, demonic spirit in the name of Jesus. We're supposed to be doing that. Yeah, it was it was cutting out. Yeah, the uh, internet started acting weird. Look, finally, Paul disposed the demonic spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. We're supposed to walk somewhere and call out a demon and they should just leave. But the reason why they don't leave is because you don't know who you are. Let's just be very clear. We don't know who we are. And because we don't know who we are and we don't know the authority we carry. Then the enemy will sit around there and mock you. But if once you get once you find out who you are and you know who you are, you can speak to them demons and they got to leave. Come out. Because it's not you doing. Remember, it's not you. It's God in you that's doing this. It's always you, God. It's never you. Because we can get we can get to the point where I, 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 me, me, me. It's never I or me. It's never us. We couldn't, we couldn't cast out a fly if the Holy Ghost wasn't in us. A fly. We got to always remember that anything, any type of power that comes that way, any type of, any time someone is healed or any time somebody is delivered by a demon, it's never you. You, you must give it back to God. You must give him back his glory. Because it's never you. Never you. Hallelujah, Jesus. It's never us. And that's how we get in trouble. We get, we get caught up with these demonic spirits because we start, I, I, me, me. I said this and God did this and we did this and God, no, you didn't do anything. Because sometimes I, I, be, I, I have to catch myself and say, oh, God, forgive me. It ain't me. It's you, God. Sometimes I got to catch myself and I correct it real quick. Because it's never us. It says, we see in the next verse that not only did the spirit of influence the girl, but it also brought her masters under the influence of a spirit of greed. As they profited by her laying, I mean, her lying divination. And this way, one spirit opened the way for the other. Because not they don't, you know, they could, they run in packs. So once you got the divination in there, then you got fear in there. You got all kinds of spirit that follows that spirit of divination. It don't come alone. It, it has, it has, it comes in a pack. Influence of the spirit of greed as they profited by her lying divination. In this way, one spirit opened the way for the other. All, however, were living under the influence of witchcraft. In Acts 13, Paul had another encounter with a sorcerer. Name uh, is called El Elamas, but Elamas, the sorcerer, for that is what his name means, opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul, proconsul, um, it's, it's uh, witchcraft in the pews by, uh, by, uh, by, by Bloomer, G.G. G. Bloomer. From the faith. Then Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked straight at Elmamis and said, You are a child of the devil and an enemy of everything that is right. You are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery. We, I says, will you never stop perverting the right ways of the Lord? Acts 13. 8 through 10. Note that the man was guilty of diverting others from the faith. He was employing Satan's old habits of seeking to deflect and distort the true worship of God. Paul also called him a child of the devil. Literally one who does what the devil does. And in an early encounter, I'm sorry, in an early account, Peter encountered a sorcerer named Simon who uh, who who amazed a city of 70,000 70, people through the power of Satan. But when the people came to Christ, Simon's powers were no longer impressive, and he became a believer as well. But did he really? Later, when Simon witnessed the true power of God flowing through Peter, he offered a 
to pay the apostles so that they, he could have the same power. And this is why people turn to witchcraft because they want power so bad that they're willing to pay for it. They're willing to pay for it, but they're going to pay for it in hell too. Because if they don't repent and come out of that mess, they're going to go to hell. When Simon saw that the spirit was given at the laying on of apostles' hands, he offered them money. He said, give me also this ability so that everyone on whom I lay my hands on may receive the Holy Spirit. Acts, Acts 8, 18 through 19. What was it that Simon offered to purchase? It was power, pure and simple. He had no desire to seek the Holy Spirit come upon the people to empower them and set them free. It was all about control. Nothing had changed in him. He still wanted to influence and impress. That's what people do. Some people do. They want to impress. So what they do is they, 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 they tap into this divination spirit. And then y'all think y'all getting a real prophecy. Y'all think y'all, y'all getting all this stuff and, Oh, yeah, and the devil can make things come to pass, too. Please believe that, okay? But some of us don't know who we are, so that's why we fall prey to it. And we got to get out of that. We got to know who we are. We got to know that we know that we know. Sorcery works through drugs, alcohol, suggestive dancing, charms, and even wearing of ritual, make, uh, ritual makeup. But just as with divination... The ultimate goal is to control and to lure people away from worship of God. Now, I saw something yesterday. I was watching, I was watching something on um, on live, and I saw something yesterday. And it was the spirit of I don't care. It was the spirit of Jezebel. And I don't care. And I even, even the, I don't know if it's me, y'all, if it's the gift that God gave me and I'm not, I'm not trying to make myself big or nothing, but it was, it was crazy because as she was going up for prayer, she was doing all of these weird things, all of these weird dancing. And, and the Lord was like, that is, that, that, that's not God. That's not me. That's not me. And I could just hear the Lord and I seen the spirit. But not one person cast that spirit out. I said, Lord, what's going on? We want to prophesy and we want to pray for healing. We want to pray for blessings. We want to pray for cars. We want to pray for this and that and the other. But we can't even cast out a demon. And we claim we got all this power. That was a demon. So help me God. That was a spirit. I said, oh, no, 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 no. And everybody clapping. And I'm like, they clapping for Jezebel because I'm telling you that spirit was not God. It was not him. Let's talk about sorcery. Sorcery works through drugs, alcohol. We did that. And it causes us to learn. Remember I said that. It gives you drug, get you attacked, get, get you connected to drugs. Some of you are not on drugs, but you're, you're addicted to prophecies. <laughs> you're addicted to prophecies. You got to have it. You're addicted to prophecies. And I'm going to tell the truth. Y'all addicted to it. You're addicted to it. Oh, God, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Now, the words of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lawlessness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revivories and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in the time past that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So if you are here fornicating and you don't think you think you're going to heaven, let me just read it one more time. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are, Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lowliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, decisions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revivories, and the like. Of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in the past time, that those practices such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. 
because we was having this conversation and somebody was like, oh, no, I'm not going to hell because I, I'm fornicating. Well, uh, Galatians 5 and 19 and 21 says that you are. It says that you are. I didn't say it. God said it. Take it up with him. This passage of scripture lists sorcery. Sorcery. Witchcraft. And the King James Version and the New International Version among the deeds of the flesh. The Greek word for is uh is pharaoh uh, pharaoh mikia pharaoh mikia pharaoh mikia from which we get the word pharmacy the place where prescription drugs are available in ancient times the pharmacist was one who mixed portions and poisons with which to influence or kill people. So what are we doing now? They were doing this in the, in the old days. They would take plants and, and mix poison and mix stuff and, 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 and get the same results. But now we done came up. Now we got the pharmaceuticals that give you all kinds of things. Pills for anxiety, pills for this, pills for that. And then people get addicted to it. So what's the difference? And nothing changed from the Old Testament to the New Testament, except for back then they used plants and they used natural things. Now we're using pills. And they making money from it. Lots of it. That happened at my brother's church. This lady started talking in tongues. And God told me, my cousin, that it is not it is not me. You see what I'm saying? I've seen people shouting. And I'm looking and I'm like, they, that ain't, they not even in this. There's no spirit there. No spirit there. No spirit there. And then I kept watching. And then I, I've seen, then somebody else got it. And I said, now that's the Holy Ghost. We better stop playing games. We better open up our eyes and see what we're dealing with. We are in the last days. The Antichrist is not coming. He's here. And if you don't understand what's going on, you're going to be deceived. You're going to get caught up in the, in, 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 in the, 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 the goose, the goose pimples and the, and the, and the feelings. And you better no, that it ain't in the feelings. Sunday, I went to church for the first time in a while, and there was a girl there, dark around the eyes and just sitting. That was the enemy. That's what I'm saying. You, you know, that, that, that means God is giving you an eye to see because that, I, that's, I see them like that too. Not only the eyes, but their whole face be different. She was not moved by anything. Just, yeah, she was, she was demonic. There was a spirit there. And I guarantee you, nobody cast it out, right? Nobody laid hands, right? Nobody called her out, right? No, because you know why? Because the church is fake. Some people are fake. They don't have the power. They want, they want all the members to come. They want everything, but they don't have that power. That power, that real power. I'm, I want to be like Jesus. I'm not going to lie. I want to be like Jesus. I want to lay hands and people... Let the Holy Ghost use me to lay hands on them so they can recover. We need to stop. We need to get it together. I'm like, am I really seeing this? Yeah, you were seeing that. That's exactly what you were seeing. We need to seek the Lord for his anointing and his power. His anointing and his power. Not because so you could be great. Because people are sick and dying. And we have the answer to what they need. We have it. But we don't know how to use it. We're afraid to use it. From which we get the word pharmacy, the place where prescription drugs are available. In ancient times, the pharmacists will mix the poisons with which influence and kill people. Today, illegal drugs enslave us and make us dependent on them. They waste our lives and our money. Young addict addicts never get a chance to experience the joy of life because of their dependency on drugs. And some of them even die. Each day, scores of young people leave their families for life. On the streets, some become me um, members of gangs and ever increasing threat to society. They encourage crimes and acts of violence in an effort to protect their turf. Gang members engage in violence and innocent bystanders are often caught in the crossfire, resulting in needless deaths. According to the Na National Center for the Victim of Crime, the percentage of the state prison inmates who reported being under the influence of drugs at that time, their offense was almost 33%. And this is coming from the Bureau of Justice Statistics in 1997. In Albuquerque, in New Mexico, in Chicago, Illinois, 
close to 30% of males and 40% of females arrested in 1999 tested positive for more than one drug at the time of the arrest. National, National Institute of Justice in 2000, this intense carbon for the next fix can even turn addicts against their own family members. Yeah, because they'll steal from you. They steal for you just to have a, a fix. In one city in South, in the South, a young man was a, so desperate that he broke into the home of his two elderly aunts and killed them to get money to buy drugs. Another woman gave her Pertin daughter, it says Pertin daughter, over to prostitution to supply the money needed to fund her habit. Drug addiction affects the rich, the poor, and alike. It doesn't matter. News outlets and magazines love to print headlines screaming about the latest famous athlete, actor, or musician with a huge salary who loses millions of dollars because he cannot refrain refrain from using drugs and subsequently, subsequently sub suspended or released by the, his employers. How do drugs cause people to have such a way using sorcery people attempt to control with drugs and even evil spirit those things which god controls supernaturally by his love cocaine for instance affects the area of the brain where the pressure i'm sorry the pleasure center is located this pleasure center controls our sex drive and experience pain inflicted on the body our bodies naturally produces a drug called dope Dofemi, do, wait a minute, dopafam, which brings pleasure to the body during sexual intercourse or helps mask the pain of the injury. For the addicted, the drive to satisfy a drug craving is similar to the sexual desires within a drug-free person. While the rest of us can satisfy our sexual desires within bonds of marriage, there is no easy or legal way out for the ed addicts enslaved by addiction a drug user must obey his or her craving however whatever it costs this is an example of control that sorcery can have over people so now we got the spirit of divination and we got the spirit of sorcery so now we know what we're dealing with when it comes to people that are addicted the spirit of sorcery drugs become the tool to gain dominion over users and enslave them in other words, your local drug dealer is a type of sorcerer. Not all drug use is bad. When uh, properly administrated, they can bring about healing as God intended to help people to endure severe pain. When abused by drug addicts and sorcerers, however, so-called recreational drugs bring nothing but destruction. But even as illegal drugs plague our neighborhoods, and families, we must realize that we are also the most legally medicated people on earth. He says, I'm like, am I really? Yeah, you saw that. It says, wow. We have drugs to bring us out of depression, to help us sleep, to aid our sex lives, to manage weight, stress, and anxiety. And to antidepressants, uh, drugs are prescription almost automatically today. While in some cases, these prescription drugs can be helpful in correcting such things as chemical imbalances in the brain. There are other causes of depression. Depression also can be the result of demonic influence. In such cases, drugs may treat the symptoms, but they will never be able to address the spiritual source of the depression. It's called sorcery. That spirit of depression is sorcery. It affects you. Normally, when we think of witchcraft, we envision black hats and old hags dressed in robes with uh, pointy hats and riding on broomsticks. In reality, however, witchcraft is, is the calling forth a spiritual influence with the, the goal of controlling the will of another person and putting him and her in a subjection to your will, to your own will. Witchcraft is the rim of the spirit dealing in D domination wait domination dominating like domination it works primarily through engaging disobedience which then opens the door to intimidation manipulation and control paul asked 
And an interesting question in Galatians. Many in the Galatian church were falling back into mindset of works and rituals to please leaders who sought to bind them to religion once again. Depression is not of God. If people will just seek God instead of doctors and pills, they will be free. It's true. Oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before those before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. Galatians 3 and 1. Believe it or not, religion itself can be an influencing factor to instill fear into the lives of believers, separating them from the true and living God. What do I mean by religion? Religion in the broadcast, since reference to a system of beliefs about God. Oh, I believe God. I, I I can do good things and still go to heaven. Um, yeah, you know, I don't have to go to church. I'm just because we are the church, but you still have to fellowship with the body. I don't have to go to church and fellowship with anybody because I can just talk to God. Religion. But religion itself can become a an obstacle if we begin to relate to the system of beliefs of or doctrine. Forget about our personal relationship with God. For the ancient Jews, Jewish people. Religion became a me mechanical following of rules done by rote rather than a personal relationship with their God. In the Old Testament, God himself had told his people that while they practiced religion, their hearts were not in it. The Lord says, these people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is made up only of rules taught by men. Isaiah 29 and 13. The Galatians have begun to fall back into the religious pattern. They put aside the truth of the gospel of grace through Jesus Christ and began trying to earn their way to fellowshipping with God through logistic, legalistic religion. If it were possible for us to save ourselves, who would be in control? We would. Men would not be like God. That is the oldest lie in the commos. God is God. And he alone saves through his son, Jesus Christ. Throughout the history of the church, various leaders have tried to exhort control over the people they were called to serve. That's right. In the Middle Age, a, her a heresy of church leaders involved that took control of every aspect of the people's lives. The church became a political force with the power of life or death. The result was corruption throughout the church to the point of selling forgiveness to those who had even money. So if you're doing this for money, you're working for the devil. That's what I was talking about last week, being stuck in, on religion. Yes. Again, leaders and the church assumed a place that was not theirs. They took their eyes off of God and said to themselves, we can be like God and issue forgiveness. Thankful, uh, thankfully, Martin Luther King and other reformers came along and the church was redirected to its original purpose. Worship, it, worship of God, not a form of religion. Anything that tries to dominate, control, or manipulate is a form of witchcraft. It is still a fact that from time to time, movements and individuals rise up and assume a place of influence and in an attempt to control a crowd, be it a handful of people or thousands. That is why it is crucial for those who God has called into leadership to remain diligent in examining their own hearts. We have to examine our hearts daily. Leaders serve the Lord by caring for those they lead, not dominating them. And Jesus talked about this issue. Jesus called them, gather, and said, you know that the rulers of the, uh, the Gentiles, Lord, is over them. And their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. We must be servants. We're servants. Matthew 20, 25, and 26. Unfortunately, witchcraft continues to work its way not only into our church pews, but also into our pupils. 
The sad truth is far more witchcraft exists within our churches today than many of us are willing to admit. Sure is. It sure is. In the church. Raised, okay, witchcraft, chapter two. Witchcraft within. Raised as a Seventh-day Adventist, I encountered many new and strange worship experience when I converted to Pentecostalism through my born-again confession. Though I was not spiritually mature enough to recognize what to call it, I sensed that my minister was a very controlling person. Others was very dogmatic and legalistic church. The pastor's preaching focused primarily on things we were forbidden to do. We were not allowed to play sports like other young men. We were not allowed to date during the summer. We did not go to the beach, nor were we allowed to participate in out outings that public schools that public schools I'm sorry, I missed my thing. It says we were not allowed to date, not allowed to go participate out as oh, public school students attended. Later, I discovered that this man even arranged and this, this, okay, this solved, dissolved marriages. He was in control and to him, everything beyond the church doors was satanic. Later, I was able to realize that he was satanic. <laughs> and sometimes it takes time. Sometimes you won't see it right away, but you will see it. In the two years I worship at this church, I witnessed the worst type of witchcraft in operation. This same minister preached at every service. We never held any revivals. We never discussed opposing opinions of theology. We heard no other messages from visiting preachers. Our spiritual diet consists of solely of things this one man wanted us to hear and know. He was demonic. Absolutely. Each Sunday, his message dealt with primarily with fire and brimstone by instilling fear in the hearts. He was able to control his congregation. Like people say, if you leave here, you're going to die. Well, I'm going to die because I'm leaving. We promote. It says we promoted. It says what promoted. Okay. I said, what promoted me to leave this church one day, the pastor told a story about a group of church members holding a conversation about him in their home. Although it was not present at the, I was not present at the gathering. He said that the Lord allowed him to sit in a private meeting of members of the church. And then in, in the spirit, he claimed to know what everyone in the church was doing and discuss that pertain to him and the church. So whenever you in a church and somebody tells you, if you leave, you're going to die or you leave, you're going to be cursed. Uh, get run. Don't don't walk. Run. Someone was slipping him some inside information because on several occasions he hit the nail on the head. Okay. Did y'all hear that? He hit the nail. On, he hit the head nail on the head, striking even greater fear in the hearts of our uh, in, in, in our hearts. And people do that when they operating in that spirit of definition, just because they hit home don't means that they're right. And you got to know that for yourself. I begin to wonder why God will reveal my personal thoughts, prayers, and conversation to this man. I realized that I fear my pastor more than I fear God. If you fear the pastor more than you fear God, you're in the wrong place. When I fell short in sin, my prayer was not, Lord, forgive me, but Lord, don't let my pastor find out. Jesus, shortly after this pastor passed away, God took me through a season of purging. The Holy Spirit gave me three dreams and one dream, this minister was still alive. I had been invited to preach at, the, at his church when he stepped on the platform. However, all the lights went out. When he finished preaching and stepped off the platform, the lights came back on. God revealed to me that the church was in darkness. God also revealed that he was calling me to enlighten his people regarding the awful, dreadful myths about witchcraft. There is nothing harmless about it. There's nothing harmless. Witchcraft harms, it harms you. How many church going people today are presently under this type of witchcraft? Why do so many people stay in these controlling, manipulating churches? In many cases, a blinding spirit prevents 
them from seeing the truth of God. And many of them willing to accept, accept the lie. While most preachers today are God-fearing servants dedicated to lay down their lives for the sake of the gospel, there are unfortunately too, far too many preachers operating as nothing more than witches and warlocks in the practices. They manipulate the people of God and profit off of them by plundering their finances and resources. They control their fear, intimidation, and false pro prophecies. They control through fear, intimidation, and false prophecies. Many of the and many of God's people have not been exposed to the increasable joy of true freedom in Christ. Unfortunately, many of these people sought refuge in the church from the world of sin only to enter into the bondage of witchcraft. Don't be naive. Satan often uses ministers as his tax masters. He arms them with whips formed from twisted inter, uh, interpretations of scriptures to control the people of God. The result is great deception, immorality, and perversion. And one horrific example of a young girl shared with her pastor how she had been abused by her uncles and by her brother. This young girl went to the church and asked her pastor for help. How did he cancel her? How did he cancel and care for her? He had sex with her for six months. Eventually, she lost touch with reality and was placed into a mental health institution. That is very sad. Oh, my God. You might suggest that this was an unfortunate but uh, uh, isolated incident with one bad pastor. If only that were the case. Today's headlines are often are too often filled with reports of cases from, similar to this one. The church is under attack from within. OK, we don't get attacked from the outside. We get attacked from the inside. And th this is why some people say, like I say it all the time. People in the world will show you more, more love than the people in the church because you're being attacked by witches and warlocks in the church, but you don't recognize them because you don't know who they are because you're not seeking God. You're believing every lie and everything that they're telling you. You're believing every prophecy that comes out from the pulpit. So you need discernment like never before so God can show you what's going on. I am not on, on a witch hunt. But I do want to shed a light on the church in order to expose the devil and his deception. A major problem, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a major problem facing the church today is that far too many Christians have not been exposed to real Christianity. We, exactly, we, we we don't know who we are. We don't have. We don't know the power that we carry. We don't know it. Many have come into the church based on a culture. Religious affiliation. <clears throat> she said, oh my God, I just said that. See, religious affiliation or de uh, de denominational background, but have not been truly introduced to Jesus. What a frightening thought to know that many of us who repented 10 years ago are just now discovering and establishing a relationship with the true Jesus. God bless you, Pastor Roberts. With the true Jesus Christ, we have been exposed to doctrine and church order, but not to the person of Jesus Christ. Church felt like an occult in the past times. Yep, confirmation from Friday. Yes, the prophet Isaiah said in the year that King Uzzah Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted, and the train and the train of his robe. Fill the, the temple, Isaiah 6 and 1. Unfortunately for many in the church, there are so, so uh, there are some people who are preventing them from seeing the Lord. I love the story of the man and his friend who would not be perverted from seeing Jesus. Oh, prevented, I'm sorry, but prevented from seeing Jesus. A few days later, when Jesus uh, came entering Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home so many gathered that there was no room left not even outside the door and he preached the word to to them god bless you um michi it says since they i'm sorry let me go back um so many gathered that there was no room left not even outside the door and he preached the word to them so many some many came bringing 
to him a paralyt paralytic carried by four of them. Since they would not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus. And after digging through it, lowered the man, the mat, the paralyzed man was laying on. Okay, that's how bad that man wanted his healing. And how bad do you want Jesus? <laughs> because you got to find Jesus and not want, always want power. People want power. And that's when they get caught up with that spirit of divination and get caught up with that spirit of sorcery and witchcraft. So, Pastor Roberts, we were just talking about the spirit of divination and the spirit of sorcery and the spirit of witchcraft, these are the three dominate, 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 dominology of <clears throat> in the Bible. And sorcery is falls under depression. The spirit of sorcery. That's that comes with the spirit of depression. Some men are bringing to him a, par, a paralytic carried by four men since they could not get him to Jesus of the crowd. They made an opening in the roof above Jesus. And after digging through, it lowered the mat the paralyzed man was laying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. He got up, took his mat and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone. They praised God saying, we have never seen anything like this. Mark 2, 1 and 5, Mark 11, and 12. Greater work shall you do. Isn't that what God said? That greater work shall you do. These men carry their sick, their sick friend to the roof because the people there were too focused on themselves to move out of the way and let them enter. Excuse me, y'all. Let them enter. The sick man was unable to see Jesus because Others stood in his way, not to be denied. His friends removed titles. Oh, I'm sorry, tiles on the roof and lowered the sick man to Jesus. Hopefully that is what this book is doing. Removing the obstacles to seeing Jesus that have been put in place by the powers of darkness and witchcraft. After exposing the deceptions of Satan, we must break up his strongholds so that the hurting sick and wounded may come to Jesus. <clears throat> In the same way that Jesus taught the crowd, we need teaching to expose the forces of evil. The Bible says, do your best to pre present yourself to God as one approved, a working man who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. So what does God say who God say you are? Who do he say you are? Satan wants to deceive us. If he has to, he will even use an evangelist to attract crowds and attempt to trick people into worshiping him. How do we know this? I experienced it myself. Madness at midnight. As a missionary, I was excited to be in the evangelistic field. Finally, I had a chance to share the gospel. God bless you. God bless you. Share the gospel. Cast out devils and proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. My ministry, my missionary journey took me to a remote section of Jamaica and the West Indies. I was invited to speak at a church that held 200 people. On one particular night, however, the crowd swelled to more than 500 people. I grew excited at the opportunity to minister to so such a throng. I found one thing unusual, however. This church had scheduled me to speak at midnight. The darkness was even more intense because this church, was, <clears throat> which was located in the jungle, had no electricity and used candles to light the building. As I sat in the pulpit, it appeared that we were later celebrating the Lord's Supper. A communion table was draped in white linen with black tassels and white lace hanging from it. From it. Coconuts, bananas, star apples, jackfruit, and a bottle of water sat on the table. Two women standing at the door were wearing white dresses with a red ribbon uh, sachet around their waist and blue and red ribbons on both legs. We were in a diff, uh, different culture, so I assumed this was their unique style of worship. Besides, I had certainly seen much strange 
stranger dressed in some churches in the United States. The service proceeded without an incident. Suddenly, I heard a loud scream that sent chills up my spine. Instead of fading, it seemed to increase in value. This screaming provoked others to join in. My experience was a, as a young man, evangelist had not prepared me for what was about to occur. <clears throat> a man whom I didn't know was sharing the pulpit with me. He stood up and announced that I would be speaking after the raising of the dead service. Oh my God. Instantly, okay, instantly, every bit of the Holy Spirit boldness drained from my body. Lazarus had already been raised by Jesus Christ. And I did not know of any other candles, I mean candidates for, for resurrection. Suddenly a drunk condensed began to pound out as the two women at the door pro, uh, pro, produced uh, m m okay, what do you call the um, I, I don't know how to say it. Massage those, ma those things that they Oh, God, I can't say this word. Uh, massages. And began to jump on the beat. They was, wait, let me see what this word means. I got to, hold on, y'all. I got I to gotta say it right because I don't know what it is, but obviously it's important. We need to know what it is. Okay, what is this word? I'm telling you, we, 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 we go, we don't, we, we don't, we, we don't know if we're around witches. We don't even know if we're around warlocks because they all, because, because we so caught up in the hype. We saw so caught up in what they saying and what coming to pass instead of asking God, is this you? Is this you, God? Is this you? Um, oh, oh God. Oh Lord. Hold on. I'm going to tell you what it is. A machete. I couldn't even say the word. A machete. Okay. She pulled it. They pulled out machetes. Jesus. It says suddenly a drum condensed be, um, began to pound out as the two women at the door produced mach uh, machetes and began to jump into the beat. The two men that came down the center aisle overturned the communion table and poured boiled rice on it. By now, the whole congregation had joined in with screaming and hollering. The coconut that I had been sitting on the table dropped open by itself. Uh, frankly, I, uh, he was frantic. He was scared. Frantically, I prayed to God for deliverance out of this place. But the situation only grew worse. The men beat the drums violently. Another man started convulsing and... Uh, Throwed it at the mouth, foamed at the mouth. This was no strange version of Christian worship. Witchcraft was in the pews. While everyone focused on the action on the floor, I ran out of the church as quickly as I could. Later, I discovered that I had been used as a drawing card for these witchcraft services. Often, when an American evangelist preaches in Jamaica, he attracts a large crowd, even though many of the people there were acting in ignorance. They were ne nevertheless practicing a form of witchcraft. Perhaps they did not know that witchcraft and Christianity are opposed to each other. This experience, however, frightened me. Great insight into how witchcraft can, can seep into the church. Opening the doors to evil. Today, Catholicism is a primary form of Christianity in Latin America. Before the Catholics arrived in their shores, however, many of these Latin American countries engage in pagan religions. As the military might of the Europe powers enable explorers to seduce these countries, the Roman Catholic Church was able to convert the native population to Christianity. Eventually, Catholicism, which uh, with its many rituals, and symbolism combined with the nat native practices serving as a catalyst for their followers to drift into heresies and witchcraft. In many parts of, of the Caribbean, as well as South and Central America, the, re the region of Centuria as an example of heresy resulting from the fusion of Christianity with West American religions brought to the New World by slaves. This cult is devoted to Central American 
diabetes, diabetes, which are which over the time became identified with Catholic saints. Thus, though they may say the name Saint Peter, they are actually referring to one of their uh, African deities. Healed of oppression, because many churches do not believe in spiritual warfare, or or are not equipped to overcome the powers of evil, many of those who need the need and seek spiritual deliverance are unable to get it. Many, uh, this is my involvement in young witnesses for Christian ministries takes me all over the world. We try to minister to the whole person, spirit, soul, and body. This actually means providing food, basic personal hygiene products, and medical supplies. On one occasion, we were holding a healing service at the National Sports Hall in the South America city of Georgetown, Ghana. Blackouts occur frequently in this country. <clears throat> it says Guyana, Guyana. Sure enough, as I was praying for people, the lights went out. As we continue to cast out evil spirits in the name of Jesus Christ by candlelight, I could hear hollering and screaming all around us. During the service, a young girl with a disfigured face came up to me. She had the scars from third degree burns on her face, apparently because she had confessed faith in Jesus Christ. The local witch doctors had seared her mouth shut at the corners with hot irons to prevent her from witnessing. Oh my God. Before coming to me, she had done, she had gone to various churches in the area to gain deliverance from demonic oppression placed upon her by the witch doctors. The local pastors had tried to consult her, but they could not help her because the pastors could not help her. She then opted for some local cult that promised to communicate with the spirit, the spirit world. How did they try to drive out the evil spirits? They afflicted third degree burns over over most of her, the rest of her body. As this poor child stood before me, the Holy Spirit instructed me to have her stand up. After she stood up, I rebuked the spirit of perversion, witchcraft, doubt, fear, ministering the healing of power of Jesus Christ. The girl who had been tormented and oppressed by the devil began to renounce the hidden works of Satan. As she did, her mouth dropped open, no longer seared shut in the corners. The arena lights came back on and I ministered there for another three hours. This scheduled one week revival lasted an entire month. We must not, however, live under the misguided impression that witchcraft is practiced exclusively in Latin America. Such practices are just as prevalent in the United States, just as it is distinguished in the Santeria cult. Witchcraft is also discussed in our churches today. In fact, I believe that witchcraft is as prevalent in the churches of the United States and the church of any other country. Yeah, because, because people in the church, some people want power. And in order for them to get that power, they, they, they get confused with the power of God and get caught up with the spirit of divination, which also gives you power, but it's the power of the devil because we already talked about how the devil work signs wonders and miracles he does these things we know he does these things but we still entertain these things i was once invited to preach at a revival for a church in the U in the u.s that had been through nine pastors in five years five women controlled this church based on their ownership of the land on which the church was built for three days i preached on spiritual warfare and we're gonna we're gonna read the next book is gonna be spiritual warfare on the fourth night of the revival, the five women came to church dressed in black. They walked around the walls of the church as the congregation joyously jumped out, jumped and shouted their, their praises to God. The following night, the pastor told me to shut down the revival. It turns out that those five women were demanding that I close the meeting and were relaying, uh, relying their uh, sentiments through the pastor. Deciding not to leave the city, I continued the revival at a nearby motel. I tremendously outpoured of uh, a, tr a tremendously outpour of God's Holy Spirit put the seal of approval on the revival that had begun in the church. No one of the nights I fell asleep it says, "Okay, on one of the nights I fell asleep in my clothes because the revival had exhausted me. As I slept, I dreamed that little gremlins undressed me." 
When I woke up, I was wearing only my garments, my undergarments, and my tie was wrapped around my neck. Instead of shying away, I took this unusual incident was a sign that my message of spiritual warfare was stirring up, stirring the evil spirits in the area. On another occasion, after preaching the word of God at a revival in New York City, I proceeded to minister to the needs of the people who came forward for prayer. One man for whom I prayed did not respond to the deliverance message. Instead, he reached out, grabbed me by the neck and began choking me. One of the sisters in the church cried out, it's a demon. The entire church immediately moved to the one side. I pleaded the blood of Jesus over the man, but it seemed to no avail. His hold on the, my throat only tightened. The old George Bloomer, who grew up in the Red Hook projects of New York City, emerged. I raised both my hands and put them on his neck and choked him right back. I didn't let up until he loosed his grip on my neck. Once he returned to his senses, I cast the evil spirit out of his out of this man in the name of Jesus Christ. This man is now a devoted servant of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and works for uh, faithfully in the church. So don't tell me that we are we, we can't put hands on people. Don't tell me that because I know somebody lay hands on me like that. They're going to get laid hands on back. But they tell her, don't do that. You're not a pastor if you don't do that. Well, don't lay hands on me like that. And you won't get your hands laid on like that. How does Satan works? How does he work? To understand witchcraft, we must understand the order of Satan's kingdom. We got to understand. When we understand these things, we're able to fight this battle. To understand witchcraft, we must understand the order of Satan's kingdom. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness and heavenly places. According to this passage, Satan's kingdom has four divisions. First, we find principalities or the dominion of evil spirits. The word principality is a combination of words prince and the palace. In other words, evil spirits are territorial. In the Old Testament, Daniel prayed, fasted, and mourned before God for three full weeks, but there was no answer. Had God turned a deaf ear to his cry? Finally, the angel Gabriel spoke these words to Daniel. Do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days, then Michael, one of the chief priests, princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. Just because you haven't gotten your answer doesn't mean God didn't answer you. He's already answered you. Your prayer's been answered. During those three weeks, the angel Gabriel could not give Daniel the answer because he was held up by a spirit assigned to Persia. It wasn't until the archangel Michael came to Gabriel's assistant that he was even able to contact, contact Daniel with God's answer. The second, this is how Satan works. We got the first. The first is principalities. Now we're going to the second one. The second Satan, Satan's divisions are power. Diversions is powers. The evil spirits represent the power of the unseen kingdom, demons, fallen angels, and seducing spirits. The third are the rulers of darkness of this age, which is referred to such phenomena as psychic hotlines, enchanters, witches, warlocks, and pro pronogasters. It says pronogasters. When we finally find spiritual hosts of wickedness, spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. These are actually pastors and teachers who preach against God in the name of God. This is where Satan's power en enables, embeds itself within the church. Today, false teaching and uh, it says blatant heresy run rampant throughout 
much homosexuals, uh, uh, it says section, seduction, adultery, mental, telepathy, and tri- uh, tickling ears, which with, with a man, with a name, it claim it, theology. These teachers are tactics aimed more at placating the desires of the flesh than pleasing and honoring God. They want you to just, you know, name and claim it, name and claim it. If it was so easy to name and claim it, we'd be rich already. Because we've been naming and claiming since, since we've been saved, some of us. This form of witchcraft practices in the United States is far more insidious than the form practiced by witch, doctors and Guyana. There, at least, the battle lines are clearly drawn. The enemy is clearly recognized. But the form of witchcraft being practiced in the United States and our church, in our churches, I'm saying in our churches, is much more subtle and deceptive. Many, many, a well-meaning soul has sought the protection of a local church as means of escaping the grip of Satan. Little do they know that con- condoning certain sexual behavior, teaching doctrines of devils, and holding services based on the needs of, and desires of the flesh constitute the practices of witchcraft. Breaking the curse. As we were dismissed from the church one Sunday, a young man approached me. He looked as if he hadn't slept in a few days. I could smell alcohol on his breath and notice his raggedly clothes. Uh, seeing a mild shaking of his head, I thought he might be having a nervous breakdown. He told me that I had invited him to church a few years ago. He decided to look me up because he was going through a difficult time in which he was losing control. His girlfriend had left him and he had not known what to do because he really loved her. He admitted that he was hearing voices that were urging him to commit suicide. These voices were so persistent and the rest and relentless that he was considering the idea that just to be free of their torment. He also revealed that he was addicted to alcohol, cocaine, and cigarettes. I immediately took him into the church where a few other members and I began praying for his deliverance. First, I led him in accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of his life. Then we confessed the word of God over him in prayer. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That's 1 John 4 and 4. For this purpose, the son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. 1 John 3 and 8. We were not there long when the young man stood up from prayer. He had stopped shaking. The drunken, drunken look had disappeared and he confessed that he had been delivered. After his deliverance, this young man This young man's brother often accompanied me when I witnessed to others. His testimony stirred many hearts towards the Lord. One day he knocked on the door of a young woman who was in in graduate graduate school studying to become a dietitian dietitian, um, in the dietitian clinic. When the young man examined, I'm sorry, when the young man explained how he had been delivered from alcohol, cocaine, and cigarettes, the young woman was in utter disbelief. She had learned that those three substances were the most addictive drugs known to mankind. Did you have any withdrawal symptoms? She said, and she said, never, he replied. What an amazing act of God, but it only happened because we believe the word of God rather than the words of man. Jesus Christ said, if the son, of, if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. John, um, John 8 and 36. The world tells us that alcoholism is a disease and cocaine addiction is a sickness. God not, I'm sorry, God did not say this. Man said this. And too many of us will believe men before we believe God. How can you break the curse of witchcraft first? You have to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Then you must also confess and acknowledge the word of God in your life. God's promises are powerful and then I'm I'm sorry, powerful and can be trusted. Your legal deliverance. What took place in, oh, this word, Gologathas Hill is the basis of our salvation and deliverance. Jesus became a curse that we might be the recipients of his blessings. He was our sin 
substitute. Scripture says the law requires that nearly everyone be cleansed with blood. Without the shedding of the blood, there is no forgiveness. Hebrews 9 and 22. The blood of the raising of the lamb of Calvary did not merely cover our sins. It took our sins away. We must understand that God is just and therefore he is a legalist. He cannot do anything illegal. The cross is the basis of our salvation. Faith appropriates what God has done for us. We must understand this as we pull down strongholds. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. Satan is also a legalist. He goes by the book. Our adversary comes with legal papers concerning our bondages. The kingdom of heaven is likened to a courthouse. We mentioned this yet last week. Where a God is the judge. Jesus is our defense attorney. Satan is the accuser of the brethren. Or the prosecuting attorney. And the blood is the jury. The demons are Satan's police officers. My God. Wait, I got to take a minute because this is just exactly what's going on in the courthouses. Father God, the Satan's police officers and our case is before God in glory. Jesus. The Holy Spirit is the paralegal who prepares our case for lit uh, litigation. What Satan accuses us of is true. We are guilty as charged because of the blood that has been applied to us. However, we are released because of time already served. Because our penalty has been paid. God no longer sees us in our sin. He sees us through the blood. The blood of a common man convicts, but the blood of Jesus Christ justifies. We must apply the blood of Jesus. The work which was done on the cross of Calvary defeats the work of the enemy. Satan is rendered powerless when we apply the blood. We are no longer subject to his snares. God promised healing and deliverance to his children. The course is broken. The curse is broken. The curse is broken. But that doesn't stop our adversary from attacking our lives. Since the beginning of time, Satan has plotted to skillfully mislead people and draw them away from a relationship with God and into bondage. Unfortunately, he even is able to do this from within the church itself. Because why? Because we get hurt in churches because people hurt us because people say things and people do things to us and then we get hurt and then we blame God and then we do this and we do that and we we, we, we say God did it but God never did anything. It's, it's just you know, we allow the, the enemy to do this to us and we got to recognize him. We got to recognize him and cast him down immediately. Amen. So I'm going to stop here because we're going to go into chapter three tomorrow. So we should, we, let me see. I don't know how many chapters this is, but um, we're going to be, we, we're going to get, we're going to know, we're going to know who we are. We're going to know what we're fighting. We're going to know what we're dealing with because the devil is a liar. He's not going to continue to beat us down. He's a liar. And that's what the devil likes to do. He likes to beat us down. So this 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 um, book has 219 chapters on it. Father, we just thank you for this teaching right now. I feel full. Y'all just don't know. I feel the spirit of God. I feel so full right now. It's not even funny. I can just lay down and just oof, bask on what this Anytime you read in the word of God, God is, you know, he blesses you. Hallelujah, God. We thank you this morning, God. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for what you taught us this morning, Father. Help us, Father God, to, to understand what we're de dealing with, Father God. Help us to understand what we're fighting, God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, open up our hearts and our understanding, God, against the wiles of the enemy, Father God. Help us to put on the whole armor of, of God every day. Help us to understand, Father God. Help us. Help us, Father God, to get a better understanding of you, to get a relationship with you like never before so we can fight this war, Father, so we become these generals that you called us to be, God, because we are generals. We are generous, and we thank you, Father. 
Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, for the prayer of Jabez. Heavenly Father, we call upon you, God, of Israel, oh, that you will bless us indeed and enlarge our territory and that your hand would be with us and that you would keep us from evil and that you will not cause pain, that we may not cause pain. Father God, we ask you that you would grant us what we have requested the way you did for Jabez, according to Second First Chronicles 4, 9 and 10, oh God. Father God, enlarge our territory today. Enlarge our territory. Cause our territory to be enlarged. Cause our families to be blessed. Cause our minds to be open into your deliverance. Whatever deliverance we need, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We command all these devils to bow down to you. We command every spirit that's not like you to leave us. Leave us. Leave us in the name of Jesus. Leave us and anyone that follows them to leave us in the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray, Father, that you leave us, that you set us free. That you set us free by, by your Holy Spirit, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Not by our power, God, but by the Spirit of the Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, help us to trust you. Help us to trust you. Help us to stand on your word. Help us to stand on your word. We thank you for your protection today, Father God. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to loose your angels in great abundance in our lives, our presence and Father God, in the presence of everyone, Father God, that we have prayed for today. And to our homes, cars, trucks, lands, properties, buildings, our businesses, and workplaces to protect us, guard us, and to force out, drive out, cleanse out all evil, wicked demons, and tormenting spirits from our presence and our homes, our cars, our lands, properties, animals, oh God. Our workplaces, forces, our cars, lands, trucks, and properties, Father God, replacement. Father God, in the name of Jesus, a hedge of protection, God, replace thereof and they cannot return to us, oh God. God, we ask you, Lord Jesus, that you send these evil spirits back to the abyss. Father God, send them back to the abyss from where they came in the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh God, we thank you this morning, Lord Jesus. We ask you to create a hedge of protection of your angels around each of our minds. We loose your mighty and warring angels around each of us, our homes, God, our cars, our neighborhoods, our lands, our properties. Father God, protect our animals, protect our our loved ones in, in Jesus' name. And we our workplaces protect us, Father, from the enemy. We ask you according to 1 John, I'm sorry, according to John 14, 14. Father God, we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for your teachings. We thank you for your love. We thank you for loving us so much that you are revealing to us the truth about our enemy, Father, that we'll be able to fight him, Father God. We'll be able to be uh, 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 effective in the way that we fight, Father God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh God, we thank you, Jesus, for your blessings today. We thank you, Father God, for your blessings over your people. We thank you for the favor that you're going to give the people of God on this virtual room today. We thank you for unmerited favors today. In the name of Jesus, we call those things as not as though they are. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for finances from the north, the south, the east, and the west. We thank you for a trip uh, the, the finances coming and following us and blessing us, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father. We thank you today. We thank you for your signs, wonders, and miracles. We thank you for med, uh, demonstration and manifestation. We thank you for greater work shall we do, Father. Greater work shall we do, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, let your signs, wonders, and miracles flow, Father God, in our lives like never before, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, O oh God. O oh God, pour your oil, pour your fire over us, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, oh God. Oh God, pour your fire over your people right now, God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. I thank you, Lord, that they're moving by your spirit, that you're moving by your spirit in their lives, that you're fixing things that are broken, that you're fixing everything that's out of alignment. God, align it in the name of Jesus this morning. Align everything, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Let your will be done, your kingdom come in your people's lives today, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. And Father, we thank you. We thank you for this wonderful time with you. We thank you for spending time with you, oh God. There's nothing like your presence. There's nothing like your presence. There's nothing like you, Father. Nothing like your being in the presence of the Lord. There's nothing like you, Father. When we thank you, Jesus, for allowing us to be in your presence this morning. In the name of Jesus, Lord. I pray that your glory will fall on your people this morning. Let your glory fall upon your people. Father, we need your glory. We need your deliverance. We need you, Father God. We need you in every area of our lives this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, Father God, that you walk with us that you talk with us, that you lead and guide us this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, we thank you, Father. We glorify you, God. In Jesus' name, we pray, Father. We come against the spirit of retaliation. You will not retaliate against God's people this morning. You will not retaliate against God's people this morning. We pull down every stronghold and every imagination that highly exhausts the, the knowledge of Jesus Christ. 
Hallelujah, God. We thank you that the enemy is under our feet. Hallelujah, Jesus. You've given us power over scorpions, serpents, and nothing shall by any means harm us in this day. In Jesus' holy name, we thank you, Father. Oh, God, we magnify you, God. In Jesus' name, we pray, Father. We bless you this morning. We bless you. We give you honor and glory for who you are, not for what you give us, but for who you are in our lives in the name of Jesus, oh, God. Oh, God, we thank you for your power and anointing that will flow incontaminated in our lives it contaminated in our lives. We thank you in the name of Jesus, Father. And Lord, we bless you once again for your mercy, grace, and your honor, God. We honor you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, Father, for his, I just, just feel that great, that thankful, thankfulness to this morning. I don't know, but we just thank him. We bless you. We bless each and every one of you in Jesus' name. And thank you for the women that came out on Friday. Continue to hold each other up. Continue to pray for one another. That's because this is what this is about. With one needs, we all need. We're one body. Continue to pray for one another and lift one another up. That's what we're supposed to do. We're not supposed to be talking about each other. We're not supposed to be putting each other down. We're supposed to be praying for one another. Amen. If, as you become more like Christ, you will, you, will, you will step away from those things. When you become more effectively wanting Jesus more than anything, you will stop dealing with those type of things. Those type of things won't even come your way because your spirit will put, push it away. So we got to become more like Christ. So that way we don't fall into that trap that the enemy has set for us. Amen. So God bless you guys. God bless you. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll be doing chapter three. We're going to re continue reading this book until we're finished. And I hope you guys got something out of it today. I hope you bask on what was read because there's more coming and it's going to be, it's going to get better and better. Amen. When we finish with this book, we're going to be equipped to see witches in the pew. Not that we're looking and hunting for witches, but if we come across one, we're going to recognize it and we're going to know what it is. Amen. So God bless you guys. You guys have a wonderful day.